<laughs> we do the Dragon Show at home, and we are now on our, I think, seventh mic stand because we don't have the genius of AV to sit there and tell us, hey, when you use them, tighten them every once in a while. So if you tuned in about a month ago to the Dragon Show, right as we're pushing play to send the stream live, Zan picked up a giant microphone boom stand and watched it fall into four separate pieces. Now I built this thing, it only came in three separate pieces, so I have a lot of fucking questions. Also, what's the, does anyone know age rating on this panel? That means 18 plus, fantastic. <laughs> Oh, oh, we're gonna look shit up? We're gonna look. What is it? It's like the con is sitting up here with me. It's like there's a site. Oh, no, right there. It tells us, see that? That means 18 plus. My picture. 13 plus. 13, there's more than 13 people in here? Excellent. 18 plus. We did it. That other words. Nailed it. You need to be more descriptive than your con ratings. Con man. Con man. Hey, come on. Do we have a panel yet here? Advanced Trigonometry has it bled into IFC yet? I don't believe so. Not yet? I did also, see a video the other day about girl math, though. Do you know about girl math? Girl math? Girl math. I don't know I'll tell you about math. it later. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You can't No, it's like you return something for $50, then you made $50. That's Rita Rutner math. That or is like if I was going to get comedian. a pedicure yep. for $50. And I didn't get the pedicure. I have free $50. You, you save $50. Exactly. You gotta write that in your checkbook. Plus 50. Yeah. Oh my god. Do any of you know what a checkbook is? <laughs> yeah. Okay, that makes me feel really good. Because I did Yomacon as their MC recently, and I asked a very similar question. And not only did no one raise their hand, but a child, a teenage child in the front row just went. <laughs> he was so disgusted with me! <laughs> how the question is, do they know how to use the checkbook? Uh, you can balance a checkbook with one finger. It's just like this. See? One finger balanced. It's perfect. <gasps> so you can spin some of them. No, you wow. can't. Wait, is that the hat of money equivalent to the checkbook? Uh, it will be for the uh, charity story at the end, because we do have this year an exactly two-year charity story. So if we make enough, we will uh, let it come out at IFC. Ooh. Ooh. Is that the one? Uh, I, I is it for two years? Maybe coming for? What's is up? it? Oh no, I don't think so. Oh. Is it the one with a sound bite? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh yes. Okay. 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 Yeah, that would okay. be the one okay. I would watch where, you guys okay. tell. Yes. Where a current sitting board member said something to the charity via Telegram. Yep. Okay, good. Yes. Because I love this soundbite. It's it is my favorite soundbite. soundbite from any staff member yep. in the history of IFC. Of ever. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. And I think, what time is it? Time. Time? Does AV have the soundbite? Are we playing it like on the phone with the microphone? No. We're going to have to play it on the phone with the microphone. That's fine. Because okay. I didn't know if it was going to happen. Uh, I don't have access to it because I'm not the staff chat. He has it. He has it. Perfect. Yeah. All right, are we ready? Now that we've been all cryptic and stuff. <laughs> You'll no, just like, have to wait till the end to find out what we're being kept about. At this point, I'm annoyed. I don't want to give them money. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, both and neither, welcome to Convention War Stories, a frank discussion of the things that happened behind the scenes at convention that happened more than two years ago, and without using anybody's damn name. I would like to introduce to our first panelist. They, you know what, Des? Tell them why you're up here, what you've done in the past, present for uh, FurCons, and who you are. Uh, I'm Pandez. I was uh, chair of this convention for six months. I helped form it back in 2009. Six months? Only? Six years. Six terms. Six <laughs> terms. Not just six months as convention. Six, ter six years total as con chair. I helped form it back in 2009. Uh, I was uh, vice chair of Motor City Furcon for several years. I ran head of programming one year here. When you ran social media, till we realized after a whole year of this that we should be doing the opposite job and switch. <laughs> Very much so. Because I'm like, I can't stand programming. I can't stand social media. <gasps> Let's just switch. If I remember correctly, we had an incident the year I was social media. This one looks at me, he's like, Alkali, you have to get online and address this. And then they checked what I was about to send, and their mind was, grow up. <laughs> like, you can't send that. Like, but that would address it. Please do not reply to the attendees with the poop emoji. <laughs> what about the upside down smiley face? That's my favorite. Uh, the upside down smiley face on a poop emoji. Uh, yeah, That's its go. cutie mark. There I like go. this. <laughs> Kitten, introduce yourself. Uh, it's Nikki. I've never, I know, it's going to take me a while. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am sorry. Um, I am Nikki. I am 
the chair, and, and uh, I have been with IFC since 2013, where I volunteered for 36 hours in one weekend, and by February I was on board. So I have been director of operations since 2014, and I have been chair for four, three years. It's so my third year. 36 hours as a volunteer, and you made board of directors? Yep. You, too, can make giant mistakes in only a day and a half. Don't forget to volunteer. Your future is scary and on fire. Volunteer a little, a little bit on fire. Swag. They're embers. It's fine. Volunteer a little, get some swag. Volunteer a lot, get some cool swag. Volunteer a lot, you're on staff. <laughs> then your swag is tears. Delicious tears. Delicious, delicious tears. tears. Not as charity. delicious as tears of the charity. Nothing's as delicious as the tears of the charity. I actually got one of your charity members drunk yesterday. I'm like, if they get drunk enough to get like <laughs> sobbing drunk, then I'm gonna. Oh yes, finally, I'll stay forty. <laughs> you you don't know depression until you realize that you hit forty years old, had your midlife crisis and bought a full-size conversion van to travel the country. Well, all of your friends are like, where's the Ferrari? I'm like, no, man, I got a gas-guzzling, I don't know, like, candy van? It looks really cool. I probably shouldn't be driving it. And then, three days ago, I changed 41. I'm like, oh, all right, I'm over the hill now. I'm going, I can lay down and roll at this point. Over the hill is easy when you're fat. The loop get them awesome. <laughs> I will gather so much loss <laughs> just to spite you. So we just found out from Nikki that uh, they started off with 36 hours of volunteering. Uh, Des, what was your first, uh, uh, like, I don't want to just call it volunteering experience, but almost like staffing experience, that moment. When did you kind of know? Because you're doing too much. You have been con chair at multiple conventions. You obviously enjoy what you do. What, what started that? Um, you know, it, literally the first thing I did, it was... Uh, um, Tora, Roxas, Todd, Rin, all these people from like the area uh, that were like, hey, you know, that FCN convention is pretty cool. Uh, why don't we try and throw a convention like that? So my first step in was really kind of the behind the scenes of organizing this back in 2009. Uh, for those of you who don't know, there aren't technically three previous hotels. There's four. There's a hotel we were working with for like four months, and then changed hotels in the middle of year zero that we never were at before we went to the Hilton, which then got turned into a parking lot after we left that hotel. So, before MST3K, mistakes were made. Yeah. Wait, is the Sheridan still standing? I just need another tractor. The Sheridan is still standing. <laughs> okay. yeah. They're attached to the Keystone Mall. They're not going anywhere. That's fair. Um, the, uh, but yeah, uh, uh, like, it was okay, I'll just come down on weekends and we'll plan stuff and we'll try and figure this out. Yeah, it can't be that hard. Famous last words. Famous last words. And then it was just like, uh, uh, they, they wanted to give me a staff position, but because I was still living in Canada at the time, I was like, I declined to take a staff position because I don't know if I can actually make the convention. I, my time off hasn't been approved for it yet. So I actually just was a volunteer driving down from Canada every couple weeks. Plan the oh my god. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's only eight hours. I was young and stupid. Oh, I understand, oh right? Oh <laughs> Alright out there. Which of you can look back onto your childhood and go like, what the hell was I thinking? Who did those stupid drives for like two hours in a location? There's one over there. What was your drive? Fuzzy uh, red fursuit. What was your drive? Red my fursuit. Yeah. Oh, oh you I drove out, you drove to where do you live? Ohio. You did Ohio to Megaplex for how long? Whole weekend? Uh, whole weekend. Twice. No. Two years in a row. Two years in a row. You did it all the way in back. Purple, what do you got? I still do stupid drugs. I took a two and a half week road trip just because of the walk. For about 8,000 miles. That's what I see. I love that stuff. I absolutely love that stuff. The, the, the beauty of uh, doing these conventions is somebody has to run the stuff team. And they have the best stories. We usually don't put Stuff Team on this panel because Stuff Team will just come up here because the con's going on and go, thank you for inviting me to your panel. <laughs> because the Stuff Team is crazy. All they do is get the equipment from 
the locker from the storage locker to the convention. And while they're doing that, we ask them not to crash a truck. Dennis, how many crash trucks have you had in your years? Uh, I'm pretty sure we've had zero. No, we've had, oh, we together have had zero. I've had one, and how many of you had to deal with? Pretty sure zero. What the hell? I have C, screw you, I'm leaving. <laughs> okay, I want to hear about your truck. Yeah. Oh, we had, uh, we had the truck that went off the road uh, because there was construction on the shoulder, and the one thing you learn about putting all of your equipment in the back of a giant truck it's good right to left. It's good front to back. But if you go off a non-existent shoulder and have the trunk do one of these... So we went back there to find so many broken pieces of sound equipment. I'd like to introduce you to this lovely thing called physics. Yeah, I'm sorry. Why am I dealing with physics? I'm a comedian. The only thing I'm concerned with is fart physics. I don't need to know truck physics. Uh, math. So, Tree man, trigonometry is always fun. Trigonometry is always fun. And then we had the Only greatest time. occurrence, which was losing a truck. <laughs> First squared year four, the, uh, the stuff person who was driving the truck, there was only three people with access to the truck. Myself, our lead of logistics, and the truck driver, part of logistics. And I was told by the hotel that the truck was in an inopportune spot. I needed to move it. Of course I will, no problem. Where do you want me to move it? They put me in a weird area. It fit, it's fine. I forgot to tell the logistics team. <laughs> and then I was prepping for closing. And then I was at closing at my head of logistics, Miko is losing their ever-loving mind because all they know is the guy who drives the truck doesn't know where it is, he doesn't know where it is, and they have to tell Alkali they lost a truck. <laughs> I watched them in the back of closing ceremonies. Straight, clear aisle, eye contact with my roommate and head of logistics, Miko, in the back, just like... <sighs> <laughs> Stop closing ceremonies, like let them take over, go like, I lost the truck! I moved the truck in back of closing ceremonies, thank God no it's on. He looks at me and goes, I deserve that, thank you. He goes and gets the truck. I go, okay, thank God. I, I mean, me go. could be worse. Uh, didn't uh, uh, a certain one of the two largest conventions in the world had a truck incident. Uh, we don't have an AC staff member here, but I know you know the story. I, I do, I do. They, uh... <coughs> if you drive... You know those rumble strips on the, on the road? Sound really cool sometimes. They help you wake up, right? If you're on construction and you just have to drive on the rumble strip the whole time and you slowly adjust the vehicle so that it's between the tires, you don't really notice that you're on the edge of the bridge. Front tire of Anthrocon's truck went off the road entirely, and we could not get the truck back onto the road without tow help. <laughs> Always a good time. <sighs> <laughs> Alright, Nikki, you haven't yeah. been on this panel for a while. It's been, it's been a while. quite a bit. Yeah. Nikki! Yes. Regale us with a towel! Yeah, I know it's harder when I just don't throw them. <laughs> yeah. You gotta go through all of them. That's how you know somebody oh, who's lot. been on a board of directors too long. You're like, tell us a convention war story, and their brain shuts down. It's not that they can't think of one. Have you ever taken Ambient and have a dream where every dream ever tries to get into your brain at the same time? That's what you just saw with Nikki and all the horrible things that happen at conventions. Uh, it's annoying too because I had one earlier and I was like, You'll never I need to go when you sit down. And, and tell it. And it's gone. You'll never remember when you sit down. Um, pass. Pass. <laughs> you remember when you tell me when you're ready. Des, I love a good water feature. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> the one at IFC? IFC's water feature. Okay, IFC's water feature. So, um, this would have been back at the Sheraton. Uh, we, um, we were there and it was, I want to say, Friday, Friday, no, Saturday morning, Saturday morning. Um, Saturday morning, we uh, start wandering down in towards uh, the convention space. And we had this one particular room that, uh, uh, it had like a little balcony on one side where you could look out over the, the ground floor where, you know, people were congregated in the lobby area. 
and uh, access on on the other side, like the whole convention space area, and that was operations. And we're on our way to the room, and the hotel liaison uh, stopped us and goes, "Oh, hey, um, so how are you enjoying that water feature in uh, your ops room?" And I was thinking, "Oh, did they finally put the water station in there? That it never made it there Friday. Well, we could definitely use some cold water in there. Is, is that what you're talking about?" No. <laughs> Oh, what, what happened? Was there uh, like a, some dripping from a pipe or something? Kinda. <laughs> Can you explain kinda? Well, somebody decided to go back to their hotel room. And they were feeling kinda tired, but they really felt that they needed a bath. So they decided to turn the bath water on and get the water coming up in the bathtub. and. Then they meandered over to their bed and decided to sleep while the bathtub was filling. Which it filled all the way to the top. Which it spilled onto the floor. And as you know, the floors... If you have a tiny spill, it's fine. If you have gallons and gallons of water, they will find their way down to the floor below. And I'm thinking, oh no. Did the people on the third floor right above us have this problem? No. Did the people on the fourth floor have this problem? No. Did the people- no. <laughs> Seventh floor. So much water over the course of the night get down to the sixth, fifth, fourth, third, second ops room. And my first thought was, Oh. And I slowly lifted my head up to look at the hotel liaison in the eyes and they went, was it, um, was it one of ours? And they went, no. Yes! It's all we need to hear! It's all you need to hear sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, like the crazy stuff can happen at cons that don't even have anything to do with your convention, but your convention gets involved. Does, was that Tanya? Oh, that, oh we Tanya. We were talking about her earlier. Tanya, we were trying to remember. Was it was Tanya. Tanya. Oh, Tanya. She's um, the best. Oh, Tanya was amazing. Our hotel liaison for the Sheraton was absolutely fantastic. By the end of year one, uh, she had a fursona. Yep. Like, she had, she had a fox fursona. Uh, she loved working with us. We loved working with her. Uh, like, she was the best part of working with the Sheraton. Like, she was fantastic. Those are always the best. We had one uh, 2018, 2017, somewhere in there. Uh, our hotel liaison at the Marriott, she put on a Husker tail. Oh, she had a blast, cute. it was adorable. So you, I feel that you can always tell the people who are running the uh, conventions from the hotel side, from the city side, because a lot of the times they will come to the kinds like, oh, I really like this, this is cute, I wonder what uh, furry I would be. And they end up like, oh yeah, I would love to be a dog, I'd love to be a wolf. And they, and every once in a while, like with the hotel liaison from one of the hotels in the Anthrocon, they had expressed interest in getting a persona, and we had to ask, like, what do you want? I believe their response was something along the lines of, oh, I think something like squirrel eyes and raccoon ears, and I want a lemur tail. I'm like, you are a furry. You're just a furry. You get this shit. That's all I wanted to hear. And then... Sometimes the hotel approaches you saying, we see that you have a fursuit parade. Um, would it be okay if we put our Easter bunny in it? <laughs> Could you make sure to walk it past the front desk? We really like that. I love that. That's one of my favorites when they ask for that. Please. So do I. <laughs> No, you, you do have a lot of fun with, uh, with uh, getting everything together. You, you work with hotels a lot. One of the big things that a lot of people don't realize is the main job of the board of directors, uh, besides making sure everyone has a good time, is you've got to make sure the convention happens next year. That's genuinely one of the biggest jobs, because so much can happen where you won't be able to run the convention in the same way the next year. So you have that good working relationship. And I was very lucky, very, very lucky at First Squared that I had a really good working relationship with the hotel liaison who was also, because they were understaffed, their security lead. Oh, oh no, he was, yeah, it was only two years of this and they finally, uh, it was a job. So when I got pulled out of a panel, year two of First Squared, to my head of security giving me one of those, 
go over to the elevator, my head of security leaves. Because the hotel liaison had said, I'm going to take care of this with Alkali. And just Alkali. And it took me until we reached the fourth floor to realize why. Because when the elevator doors opened, my fourth floor of a six-floor hotel, it was like The Shining, but with weed smoke. It, the doors opened and it fell into the elevator. And I was impressed. I was like, oh, is everyone on this floor smoking weed? He looks right at me and goes, no, and walks me down the hallway to a door that looks like somebody is pumping fog out from underneath it. So fun fact, if you didn't go to college and you didn't learn this one, the towel that goes under your door has to be wet. Also, don't smoke in your hotel room, but at yeah. least use a wet towel. Oh my, oh my, I was ready to kill them. So now we're knocking on, hotel room. don't smoke in your hotel room, seriously. Remember what we said about wanting the hotel to exist the next year? That's a big one. Stop getting us in trouble for weed smoke in the hotel room. They make edibles for a reason. Right? <laughs> or, not I don't in Indiana. Mean, not in Indiana, great. Oh. Not in Indiana, so don't get caught in your hotel room. <laughs> that's, a, that's not the point. It's <laughs> definitely not the point. So beyond the point, don't get caught in your, <laughs> do it outside, be Disney. If you get caught, jump out the window and claim to have been there the whole time. <laughs> I make their life a living, nightmare duda. <laughs> well, we knock on the door. There are very few things that you can do to actually anger me. I don't get angry until the toilet flushed four times in a row. We are standing outside now. I'm I'm already tipsy. I'm annoyed. I'm angry. I'm just like, I'll just take it, please. It's so expensive. This is my one benefit. So they open the door. The weed pours out of the room, and then we find out why. And the reason why is furries are geniuses. I've been in this fandom for. 14 plus years now. And one thing I can always say is I am never in need of an engineer if I am around furries. <laughs> Every one of you is either a doctorated engineer or just an at-home bong builder. I don't know how you all are so good at this, but when I walked into the room and I saw sitting on cinder blocks, which they obviously brought in themselves, a fog machine with a giant a, a cardboard duct tape bowl on the top that is sucking the cannabis through and just hotboxing the entire room at a rate that made me go, you might have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I was impressed. really frustrating. Oh, it's very frustrating because now everything smells like weed. We're going to have to deal with all this. But it's over. These guys knew they screwed up. They immediately agreed to pay for the fee. They did get kicked out of the hotel. It's not a fun story for them. I've been frustrated as a con chair before. Oh, yeah. But I've never okay. been sit on an attendee frustrated. We're about to get to that one. Thank you. That was what I wanted you to tell. I have to tell one last thing. Such a good oh, I don't know. It's going to be there because we had to get in the elevator. Me and the hotel liaison got into the elevator. I would like you to be me. He did this. Uh, I'm not the line. I'm not. Nowhere to talk about Yes. Okay. Actually, that's what happened, because I threw paper, he threw scissors, and he got to take home the fog machine! <laughs> <laughs> he still earned content. He still has it. Oh it does gosh. not work anymore, but he still has it. Nikki, it's never as bad as when you have to sit on oh, the time I was going to throw it to Dez. Oh, both of you can do this one. We can. Oh, both of you. Tag team. Do it. Because <laughs> so. I think this was my first year on board. This could be. It was, uh... This was. Yeah. This was back to school year, <coughs> I want to say. Oh, yeah. This back is, to school No, it would have been the year after that. So, Storybook Villains? Storybook Villains, that's right. Storybook Villains. Because Todd was in the dress, you're right. Todd was, uh... Yeah, Melissa. Melissa. You're yes. right! Oh, my God! Such a good Melissa. So... Where are you starting at? Uh... MST3K. We'll start at MST3K? Yeah. Okay. So... Wait. What was... 
I'll start it, I'll throw it to you. Because I thought the story started with the faculty, but that would have been Yeah, for, that's MST3K. But that would have been for the school year, not for, for the kids. We just found out that we've combined two occurrences <laughs> into one in my mind for like five years now. You're right, those were two. What is wrong with this guy? There's, there's the faculty you're right. No, no, you're and right. They're sitting on attending. Yeah, yeah. There are yeah. two separate stories up there. Yeah. Why did I. You do this one then. Okay. So. Uh, oh, so. Oh, yeah. Back at the Sheraton. Uh, it was late. Friday or... I think it was Saturday. No, it had to have been a storybook villains because that's the reason you disappeared. Yeah, yeah, you're right. right. So we're starting at MST3K. Okay. Roxas was con chair. Roxas was con chair. Yeah. Uh, 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 Todd was head of finance and uh, we were doing MST3K. And we had decided for the movie... So this was Thursday night then. Yeah. yeah. Thursday that's... night of... Yeah. This was on Thursday. We were watching because it was the school year, the school theme, uh, uh, back to school. Uh, we were watching The Faculty. And if you're not familiar with The Faculty, be lucky. Uh, <laughs> it is not a good movie. And there was a rule where anytime there is any sort of water that appears, you have to drink. <laughs> wow. They paid a lot. They paid a they lot. They paid a lot for that rule. Torch. Well, Torch. Oh my god. Torch. Oh, so we're there, we're watching the movie, and all of a sudden, Head of finance comes rushing into the room, taps Alkali on the shoulder, and Alkali goes out with head of finance. About 15 minutes later, Dorsai come in, tap me on the shoulder, and I have to excuse myself. So the two of us, we're two of kind of the, you know, at the time it was really just you, me, and like two or three other people. Yeah. It's a much bigger panel now. So most of the panelists have been tapped by board or security to leave the room. So I go out and I'm like, okay, what's going on? They're like, we need to have a board meeting. I'm like, okay, what's going on? We're all sitting in the room. Roxas is kind of <laughs> got his head in his hands. Oh, you mean the chair face? The chair Big face. Time chair face. Todd is looking all worried. He is nowhere to be seen <laughs> because he was upstairs talking with Dorsai. Apparently, an attendee on Thursday night of Con had decided to mix various things that should not be mixed. In each of their own capacity can be a potentially fun time. When you combine them together, you become the Hulk! <laughs> and every single light fixture in the hallway is your villain. <laughs> <laughs> Roxas is heading up to bed to lie down for a bit, and he hears thwack crash, thwack crash, and is like, oh. He opens the door to the room, and there is an individual clearly under the spell of something. Thwack crash, does not care that his hand is getting bloodied and battered, and Roxas is like, no, what are you doing? Don't do that. And this person thought Roxas looked like a light fixture. <laughs> and Roxas decided to show them he was a wrestling fan. <laughs> he had that attendee on the ground. He was sitting on them, arms being held back like, oh, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Dorsire called up. Dorsire tagged him to find out what's going on because they need an extra pair of hands and he is muscly. <laughs> I used to be way more muscle. <laughs> We're the police are there, ambulance is there. All the board are like Oh, oh we go we gotta go to when the elevator door opens, I enter into the hallway, because he wasn't on his back with Roxas on him. He is laying on his front with Roxas sitting on his ass holding down his arms, which means this kid is just kicking Roxas <laughs> in the back. As the, and this is what me and the door side walk out of the elevator to, and door side just looks at me, you want to hold his legs? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> this, this is where we're at now. So I find out after that had happened, and we're all sitting there that night, we're talking about the events and how to deal with that situation. Well, attendees from that perspective in MST3K saw him wander out of the room, saw me get escorted out of the room by security, 
And then Alkali disappeared for the rest of the night. He comes down the next day, and everyone's like, oh my god, we didn't think you'd make it back to the convention. Are you okay? How are you doing? I'm, I'm fine. What, what, why did you think I wouldn't make it back to the convention? Well, we, we saw you leave the room, and we saw Des get escorted out by security, and then we saw the ambulance. <laughs> So clearly, you were hospitalized last night. <laughs> like the whole convention thought I went to the hospital. The rumor had spread and everyone was 100% sure he was hospitalized and just made it back the next day. Which, I don't know how to feel about that, but everyone was like, Wow, you went to the hospital tonight! We knew you'd make a full <laughs> comeback. I'm like, what do you think of me? Like, yeah, he just gets his stomach pumped every night after the booze. Don't worry about it. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, so, that, that is a classic. Go for it. You know, pranks are fun. <laughs> but. <laughs> We're not having the con on you. They're not first. fun. Never. Well, we can move it to Gary. You want to go over? Oh, Gary, Indiana. Gary, Indiana. Oh, Gary, the one Gary, hotel. Indiana. So, we decided one year for our April Fool's team, we were going to send out a post on social media. Hey everyone, we've uh, just negotiated a new contract and uh, everything's all set in place. Can't wait to see you all this summer in Gary, Indiana! Woo! Which we clearly thought was a joke because it's Gary, Indiana. You know who didn't think that was a joke? Ooh. Uncle Kage. <laughs> he is texting me going, okay, I can understand moving the convention. I I'm a little confused why you're going to Gary, Indianapolis. Seems like a more central location, but why did you have to have an emergency board meeting for that? And I said, uh, hey, Sam, what's today? He goes, April the 1st. And I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> You son of a bitch. <laughs> Literally hundreds of people were messaging us going, We're moving to Gary? Oh. No. So from now on, we, had, we decided from that point on we had to make it clearly more obvious that we were doing April Fool's things. Like, hey, make sure to post your chair Sona today. Or, uh, this year it was Indie FishCon. Indie FishCon. Indie Fish I like that one. <laughs> we, so... Uh, uh, pranks are fun, like I said. Uh, they're not very fun to play on the con chair <laughs> Thursday of con while everything is being set up. But before I tell this story, we have to, this is a two-part, we gotta go back a little bit. Sure. So if you'll recall, 2016, I believe, was Indy for 100. Oh yeah, yep. that's right. And we had some Ferraris in the lobby. <laughs> and we had to do some negotiations to get those Ferraris in the lobby. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to be clear with your uh, insurance writer mm -hmm. about what you're going to be doing with things when you want to put them in the hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Because I've been doing the insurance for multiple conventions for a long time now. It's fairly simple once you get to know it. You learn specific things. Bounce houses. Bounce houses are a toggle on every single insurance form when you fill out. So that's one of the few times these guys saw my fat ass run. <laughs> when I found out there was a bounce house set up behind the stage in main events once year, one year, and I literally bolted out of my chair to go murder someone. <laughs> but this time was the Ferraris. I got the insurance policy and it was about 2,000 more than normal. I'm like, all right, these are the quarter of a million dollar cars, they're inside, this is a lot of money, they really want it, it's in the budget, fine. But before I'm done, I have to read through the entire contract as I'm going through our insurance policy for IFC, I'm noticing all these clauses. We will not be responsible for any items damaged inside the ho hotel due to the operation of a motor vehicle. The motor vehicle has been tested and will not release emissions that are not suitable for inside the hotel. They're like. Wait a minute. So I called them up like, hey guys, you know we're just like pushing a Ferrari into the lobby of a hotel through a giant door and letting it sit there, right? Like, oh, we thought you were driving them. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> you thought we were going to be driving 
Ferraris down the hallways of a hotel, and that cost $2,000. Like, yeah, basically. So I called them and was like, hey, do you guys want to drive Ferraris down the hallways? I said, absolutely, let's do it. The hotel, not so much. <laughs> So that, that got us kind of up to the last minute, having to make all those changes and get everything, the, the I's dotted and the T's crossed. So it was a little touch and go to get the Ferraris there, but it worked out just fine. It did. It did. They were pretty. And then 2017 came along. And... I forgot about that. Jake Bunny, who was the theme coordinator and helped us get us the Ferraris in 2016, came to me with a brilliant idea of a prank. But again, don't prank the con chair the Thursday cup. <laughs> As I learned the hard way. So, the Wednesday, we got to Khan. He get, pitched me this idea. We stayed up half the night creating Photoshopping forms and filling out fake forms. And in the morning, we went to Des and handed them forms and said, okay, so where's the Ferrari going? And I believe I said, Shua? <laughs> I think that's about right. And, uh... Jake had a picture from the previous year when we dropped the Ferrari off and said, yeah, the Ferrari, it's right outside, see? Where do you want it? We had no plans <laughs> for the interior. We had no protective strips to put down to, you know, catch any dripping oil or anything. None of that was prepared, to my knowledge. And I was like, show me the Ferrari now. We need to figure this out. What's going on? Take me there. And he and said, absolutely disappeared and then came back a few minutes later with a dolly and a little matchbox Ferrari on it. <laughs> I and I not <laughs> had daggers thrown in my direction. <laughs> hey Alkali. Yes. Ever had a basement rave? Oh god damn it. <laughs> You're one of you're one of first quits. So, uh, starting a con is, is, is actually a wild experience. I was lucky enough to have a lot of experience running IB conferences and helping out with other cons. So we had a good baseline, but always, if you're running a con for the first time, you're going to run into things you never thought of. And in our case, that was Thursday night. This was far before we had panels that are specifically built to be Thursday nights of cons. This is before... Uh, people really minded not having stuff to do. People got to cons on Fridays. So year one of First Squared, we had people showing up Thursday night. We didn't have a ton to do, but they entertained themselves. They went into the basement where we had opened up the video game room a day early. It was set up. Why not open it? So we opened it up. And that also meant there was this long, empty, poorly lit hallway that they all brought their sound equipment to and flashing lights. So on that night when the hotel talked to me, he's like, hey, I didn't know about the rave in the basement. <laughs> I've dealt with cons before, I've dealt with hotels before, like, oh, the rave in the basement, what, is somebody down there with their cell phone in mm -hmm. a room, like kind of dancing, I'll go take care of it. I went down and said, there are streamers, there are strobe lights, there's four radios playing four different things. It is loud and there are shirtless furries just dancing in a line down this hall. It was like the gayest conga you've ever seen. <laughs> but basically, I have now have a rave in my basement with naked nearly nude people, nearly, and this is something we have to deal with, so we soft shut it down, because it was kind of cool, like, I love that people were having a good time, it's like, all right, guys, I got in a little bit of trouble, so you're a little bit shut down. One radio and put on your shirts, like, is that so much to ask? So they did, and they moved it up to the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> that condo line went up the stairs, past the main desk, and of course, who was leading it? A late great friend of mine who took one look at the person in charge of hotel registration. He goes, we're all done down there. Da, 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 shirt, da, 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 da. <laughs> I love my friends. <laughs> So, Nikki, sometimes when you run conventions, you're, you're lucky and you have the entirety of the space. 
Like this weekend. Like this weekend. Yeah. You pretty much have the whole hotel. And sometimes you have other groups with you. Sometimes you have to share. You have to share and you have <laughs> to figure you know, out ways to get along. Frat boys and parents of... Uh, Christian class teams. Yeah. Uh, one year at the Marriott, we actually were uh, sharing the hotel with the Little League uh, finalists. I forgot yep. about that. And their parents. And their parents. They were proud. The kids were out in the inner courtyard, out in the inner courtyard, uh, playing catch with the dogs for suitors and just generally having a great time. Um, the parents were in the bar having their glasses of wine and going, run along, Timmy, this is mommy's time. <laughs> And sometimes, you know, there was some, it wasn't great, it wasn't the perfect interaction, but we made it work. We even got to the point that about a half a dozen fursuiters went to that team's game that was happening, like, down in Indianapolis for the act, their actual final game. There was, like, you should clip on ESPN of the crowd, you could see them in there. That was kind of fun. Yeah, I liked that. was fun. Fast forward about five years later. And I hear a story that I had not heard from the year that I was con chair. We're talking in the staff chat, we're reminiscing about stuff like this. And one of my staff members tells me this. Thank you for finding this, Vicky, I forgot. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, phone, don't you. There we go. Uh, I'll never forget the two softball moms walking out of the swingers party in nothing but bras and panties each carrying an almost empty fifth of New Amsterdam vodka. <laughs> Walking past me, out into the courtyard, and going for a swim in the fountain with the fire features. <laughs> Hotel security and or the police had, the, had them get out of the fountain from what I heard the next day. They literally went for a swim, drunk AF in the fountain. And I replied, how am I hearing about this five years later? <laughs> You're the con chairman, and we don't tell you nothing. <laughs> That's the thing. If you are in charge, they know that you're in charge. So if something like that happens, they deal with it, and they let you deal with the bigger things. <laughs> and then you find out five years later, and you drink a whole bottle of wine. <laughs> I love that you had to deal, I believe, one of you was definitely got hit with this one. When the off-duty police officers who were walking through the hotel hey. came into operations and told you about the panhandler? Oh, yeah, the panhandler. <laughs> Which one uh, you, I don't you really got to be careful about, about the panhandler. You really got to be careful about those panhandlers. Their lobbies. Their lobbies. Yeah. Was, that, was that at the Marriott? Yeah, it was at the Marriott. I think so that, then, that was our first year. Uh, I forget. It might have been our second year. It was Dez. 2016? Yeah. It was Dez. Was it Dez? Yeah. I'm, uh, not, I'm not the I don't one that's talking to them, though. No, no. We were on the other board. I think that's the thing. I wasn't... Oh, I think they talked to security. I think it was late enough that they yeah. talked to security. Oh, okay, so it was Dorsa. It was, it was, it was probably Renegade. Oh, yeah. oh, it's yeah, Renegade! Right. God damn yes. it! Yes! So, police, ununiformed police, go into operations to talk to security. He's like, uh, we just need to let you know, you have a panhandler in your lobby with, like, a group of people around them. And, and I believe Dorsa the are... response was, is he tall? Yes. Does he have a top hat? I yeah, that's kind of that. weird for a panhandler. <laughs> That's our director of finance. Don't worry about him. So yeah, in the security logbook for the Dorsi, I am labeled as the panhandler. <laughs> and they have used that moniker multiple times, as in, went upstairs to shut down a party, the panhandler was running it, all I did was stare and smile. He kicked everyone out of his room. <laughs> you know, sometimes it, it's fun to be in the log, the Dorsi log. Every once in a while. It's usually not a good thing, though. Yeah. Especially when you say the Q word. Oh! No, you can't no, say it. No, can't say no. it. You cannot not, say the Q word. Not the Q as in LGBTQ. Nope. Nope. Q I, as in the place. Somebody in the audience just said it. We won't repeat it. Nope. There's a reason for that. Uh, do you guys know the original Q story? I do. Your turn. Do Absolutely. it. Do it. That's such a good thing. So we were at the Marriott, and... Uh, Things were going pretty well. It was, a, it was a good weekend so far. I think it was Saturday midday-ish. Maybe it was Friday. It was, it was early-ish in the weekend. And uh, I believe it was Jake Bunny, who was director of operations at the time. Mm -hmm. I believe I was chair. Yep. And Doris I was sitting across from him. He 
was sitting at the operational bar. I miss that thing. Yeah. And, you know, contemplating and said, you know, it's pretty mm, right now. And everybody <laughs> stopped and looked at him. And then the fire alarms went off. <laughs> and he put his head down and walked out of the room. And we evacuated the hotel. Fortunately, it wasn't our fault. I think uh, some duck grease got on fire, if I recall. It was a kitchen fire. It was yes. a kitchen yeah. fire. It was, it was a very small grease-type Wait, fire. We only had to evacuate for a few minutes. But, uh, this was the same day as... Was that uh, Sunday morning? Or was that... Uh, was this the same time we were doing uh, uh, Three Headed Monster at the time? That's the same incident, right? Oh, that could be actually. Yeah, so that was Saturday, 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 Saturday. Uh, on the other side of Khan. Which, on the other side of Khan, because somebody said the Q word, we had a magical moment as well. Because this hotel, um, it had issues. It had, it had it weird, issues. random issues. One yeah. of the issues being that we have a room full of this. Insanely expensive sound equipment, sound boards, tens of thousand dollars worth of equipment, and one of the doors didn't lock. So to deal with that, they're like, well, this room has multiple doors. We're going to chain this door closed. And there I am in the back of the panel room with Uncle Kage, who gives me one of the... Alkali? Alkali, my boy. My boy. My boy. What's that on the door? Oh, the door doesn't lock, so they changed it to closed. Well, what if there's an emergency? <laughs> oh yeah, no, he won't let me live that one down because in his mind he got me because I already had a second to deal with it. Why didn't I deal with it right then? You had a whole second to remove those chains. <laughs> my boy. My boy. My boy. <laughs> we just do this for the rest of the show. My boy. My boy. <laughs> All right. My um, radio calls. All right, guys, here's what we're going to do. Two things right here. We're going to do out-of-context radio calls. And also, if you haven't seen them, Indie Furcon has had the same charity now for a while. And that's because they, this is five. Oh, my God, I love them. It's because they're awesome. They are not only uh, uh, doing an amazing thing for the animals they have here and at their facility, but at heart, they are such furries. They have been going to panels all weekend. They are part of the community as, part of, as far as we are concerned. Guys, if you have a moment, go out there, take a look at what they have and what they're doing, and remember that we are furries. We help those who cannot help themselves. Those animals they're taking care of right now, they're going to be just fine. We're going to help them. But that being said, if you do got a little bit, if you can give, give. The hat is coming out to the audience. I'm throwing it right at you. Sorry if I hit you in the face. We. <laughs> Almost. Perfect. I, I didn't hit you in the face, and that's all I cared about. All right. Out of context radio calls. There are two types of radios at fur conventions, hot mic and cold mic. Hot mic is when you are talking to a radio and somebody else just has it on their shoulder, and it's spilling out. It's just everyone can hear it. Otherwise, we have headsets. These are the stories of the times we did not have headsets. Des? Um... Sitting in the operations room at Motor City Furcon, late Saturday evening. Security to operations. This is operations. Should we do anything about the people juggling fire on the back patio? This is head of legal going off radio and walks out of the room. Very similar ilk, uh, Anthro Ohio. This is events to security. Uh, has anybody put out the fire yet? <laughs> this is contrary to events. Do you mean the barbecue? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Please call it a barbecue. <laughs> Ten minutes later. <laughs> this is con store to operations. We're going to need more poppers out here. <laughs> <laughs> this is con chair to con store. Do you mean novelty popping discs? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Please call them Novelty Popping Discs. Can't share off radio. <laughs> Do you remember any of our crazy ones? I just remember the, the, the codes. They're always fun to come up with every year. Oh my god, the codes. I forgot some of those. We won't, we won't do yeah. that story. No, not that. But sometimes we try to come up with... Uh, there was one here. 
our head of finance was Kashi. And we decided to make the theme for we need a money pickup as Kashi, Kashi needs, walkies. needs walkies. Kashi needs walkies in main events. Coming to give Kashi walkies in main events. I still love, you'll hear this one every once in a while. We've got a Donald Duck in the dance. All security on their way. Who knows what a Donald Duck is? You guys do? What's a Donald Duck? No pants, that's right. Shirt, no pants in the dance. I think my favorite code though was uh, Jenny for 80s year. What was Jenny? Jenny was the code. 8675309. That's right. Jenny's oh my in God. main events. Jenny's in main events. Who's Jenny? Why is she in main events? She's there. Who is Jenny? Send finance to get Jenny in main events. Why does finance need to get Jenny? Finance have to get Jenny. Because <laughs> finance needs to get Jenny. <laughs> but can't security come get Jenny? No, it needs to be finance. <laughs> Is she okay? Do you need to send first aid? No, just send finance for Jenny in main events. How yeah. was that? Point, Jenny's we over in secondary too. Why is Jenny in two places? That's when we decided that we needed to not use names anymore. Names don't work. No. Names do not work. Oh my god. Of course, there's, there's the classic. Uh, <clears throat> this is security to uh, charity? <laughs> This is Charity, go ahead. We have a half-naked charity bear asleep on the operations table. Please advise. This is head of the board. I'll be right there. Now, come on. What do you got? That was... Oh, yes, that was. Sorry. I'm not wearing my glasses anymore. And we have one of the cruxes of the problem. Don't admit to that. Do you want the other half of the story? Not allowed to do the other half of the story. No! <laughs> no! It is cute, though, I will admit. But of course, as we've gone over, it is, the radios are a necessary evil. They're needed. And usually when conventions first get their radios, you have a little bit of fun. It is like being in the future. So MFF, the first year that they got the radios, I was actually running Hospitality Suite, and we had a weekend. It was the first weekend that we got a 16 spigot soda machine that was refurbished in quotation marks. This thing sucked. It went down all the time. It would constantly stop drawing in water to the point where a child walked up to the soda machine, went for Code Red Mountain Dew, and I watched as Code Red Syrup slowly dribbled into their cup. Oh, young man, I, I, give me a second, I'll recharge the system. And he goes... <laughs> and drank his liquid lifesavers and walked away. I'm like, he's gonna be president someday. <laughs> this is like this all day. Myself, my staff, everyone working in this department is exhausted. We were known as the Sticky Bandits. Because <laughs> anyone who had to deal with the damn soda machine is kneeling behind it in syrup, getting up and then getting covered in fursuit fur. We looked like we had been tarred and feathered. <laughs> but it's over. It's Saturday night. Myself, the late great Takaza, and Woody, their head of finance, are standing in back of house. We're kind of shut down for the night. And we're playing with the radios. Thank you so much, my dear. We're playing with the radios because all weekend, all weekend, thank you. We have been listening to the same thing happen over these radios. <laughs> Ducktails. <laughs> Woo! Please stop that. This is keeps happening to the point that now it's an argument. People are just getting like, this is this to this, and we're gonna need uh, four more carts over to secondary events. Ducktails. <laughs> Woo! Every time. <laughs> So the argument has started with the people who want to take these radios seriously and the people who want to have fun. <laughs> and it's non-stop. It is that we are sitting in back of house, we are cracking up, and Woody turns around and knocks a giant bowl of oatmeal right off the counter, onto the floor, and I'm looking at it, and I like having fun as much as the next guy. So I grab my radio. This is Alkali, the oatmeal has been spilled. 
Woody's face goes white as a sheet. Takaza is doing that laugh where you know they're no longer breathing. <laughs> they're speechless. I must have been really funny. Because the radio clicks back on. <laughs> Security to Alkali, Alkali, where has the oatmeal been spilled? Oh, it's everywhere. <laughs> this goes on for a good 30, 40 seconds. Takaza gathers himself and in bated breath. <clears throat> Alkali, oatmeal is the code word for money. <laughs> One of the heads of charity, the person who is known for walking around the con with thousands of dollars in interior hidden coat pockets to give to the charity, had just announced the money has been spilled. Where did I spill it? Everywhere! I was banned from using a radio at MFF, and that's the happiest story I have. <laughs> We've got a few more minutes. Did you guys figure it out? I'm trying to find the police. He's here. He's here. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, both and neither, give it up for Hannah! Des, if you can let Hatter in on what's going on now, it is time for the charity story. I will count this, you do, you talk. So, last year, I believe it was? was two, it years ago. two years ago. Uh, Hatter, you were uh, kind of helping the charity quite a bit. I was the charity liaison, you, yes. Yes, you were charity liaison. And it's, uh, why don't you talk a little about, about uh, just in general, dealing uh, you know, hanging out with Heather and what she was like. So Heather is a wonderful individual. Uh, I have never met anyone like her. And to this day, I've never met someone who has managed to pull the wool over my head or over my eyes as much as she had one night. Oh, it's not even on? No. That might help, but I am kind of loud like Alkali, so like this. That Don't work. do that to yourself, you'll just blow out your voice. Oh. Hello. Yeah, it's working. Okay. So, two years ago, this was post normal hours. The, uh, the convention was about 6 p.m. I'm hanging out with Dez, with Nikki, with several members of the staff. Uh, in, in someone's room. I can't remember who it was. At this point. Was it operations? We were in operations hanging out because I remember what happened when you got the message. And <laughs> Charity had closed up for the night, and I was like, okay, cool, I don't have to do anything until I hear, I feel my phone buzz. Well, let me check my phone. Oh, it's from Heather. Okay, she might need to know something. What's going on? That's weird. Everyone looks at me confused. I see a text that just reads, Hatter, I didn't know there were puppies at the convention tonight. <laughs> Heather, what are you talking about? There are no puppies at this panel or at this, uh, at this convention. Oh yeah, there's this panel called Pup Play 101. <laughs> <laughs> I need to now pull out my phone to let you all hear the voice message I sent immediately over Telegram to the charity. That we were standing right beside him and fell over laughing. <laughs> but before that, we all paused. That's not what you think it is. Okay, you need to come to Ops before you go to that panel. <laughs> I... It's oh. not that panel that you think it is! Jake. <laughs> okay. Apparently it's wanting to play all of my recorded messages. I immediately shoot up right. Jake, showing how fast of a rabbit he is, because he was also in this room, rushes out the door. I rush out the door behind him. I get halfway down the hall before I go, wait a second. 
My mate is running that panel. <laughs> you did not hear this part of the story, did you? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> My mate is running this panel. I have nothing to worry about. The worst he's going to do is go, Heather, this is not the panel you think it is. <laughs> you had a few to drink. You should go have some fun elsewhere. Or, knowing my mate, Heather, hey, how you doing? Come on in. I turn around the corner to find the head of the charity, Heather, with her board, bent over, laughing her ass off. I come around the corner and go, hey, Heather, how you doing? So we should go back to operations and I should explain what, what that panel actually is. And she looks me dead in the eyes and goes, Hatter, I know what that panel is. I look at her dumbfounded like, what? I told my board, do you guys want to see how fast I can make the charity run? <laughs> So in the meantime, we were still sitting in operations because I was being a good delegator and not involving myself. And Hatter walks back in the door and suddenly goes, I've been had! <laughs> has a great night. What I actually said, I can't say because this is a PG-13 panel. <laughs> but that was the gist of what I said. Thanks to that incident, that is why Charity After Dark now exists, just to tell that story, along with other After Dark stories. Ladies and gentlemen, both and neither, this has been Convention War Stories. If you liked anything you heard here, remember, these are all just stories that have happened to us while we've been helping out on volunteering, staff, board, or whatever. None of these stories don't happen without one thing, and that's volunteering. If you have a moment, if you're enjoying the convention, if you want to be a bigger part of it, volunteering is how you do that. You can head over to operations at any time. Tell them that you would like to volunteer, and it's your road to greatness. Greatness being lack of sleep and sometimes free conventions because you're running around too much to deserve to pay for it. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. I want to give a huge thank you to Hatter! <laughs> your con chair, Nikki! Great convention and good night! Woo. All right, we are done. Yep. What's up? 202. Silver Gattoman, he bought me a coffee. Silver Gattoman, here is the song for thee. He likes to video all the panels at the cons. You should go and watch them, whether they are short or long. Silver Gattoman, you video that's not a jibe. All of you go to his YouTube channel and like and subscribe. <laughs>